This week we're talking about Lantern Festival 2020, Japanese Cherry Blossom Festival, Jazz in the Canyon, Tustin Sip and Stroll, and a tip from the trench to help today's buyers win the home of their dreams. And we're back. Here's another episode of this week's SNL. Scott and Lane's weekly update. And you were missed. We had another S in the hot seat last week. We had Stipe in the hot seat last week because I was out of town and he filled in beautifully. I hope I'm still relevant. Well, welcome back. Welcome back. What do we have going on this week? Thanks a lot. This week we have our showcase event, which is the 2020 Lantern Festival coming up this weekend, February 22nd. It's an all-family event and it's the coolest thing. It's Central Orange County at the Renee and Henry Sigerstrom Concert Hall in the South Coast Metro area. And if nothing else, the architecture of this building is absolutely amazing and a must see. It's gonna be held in the lobby. It's gonna be transformed into an event space that's celebrating the end of the Lunar New Year. Again, it's a free event for the whole family. There's gonna be games, riddles, art making, dragons, lanterns, all made by the community. I hear and food too. I know, I was saying, and food. Lane's the uh, foodie, so food is always. I love food. I know, food's always first on Lane's list, generally last on my list. <laughs> yeah, um, food first, lantern second. <laughs> <laughs> and there's gonna be a lot of food. Again, it's a free event, fun for the whole family, easy to get to for everybody in Orange County, the 22nd on Saturday. Check out the link below if you're interested. Well, let's stick with the Eastern Hemisphere theme here. Sure. Okay, so we also have coming up the Japanese Cherry Blossom Festival at the Bowers Museum in Santa Ana. That's uh, March 1st at 11 a.m. Now, that's gonna be like a little bit of an appetizer because Huntington Beach actually holds a very large uh, right. Japanese Cherry Blossom Festival, and that comes up in the springtime too. So if you just wanna whet your appetite a little bit, get some of that, get some of those Japanese Cherry Blossom flow, festival flows yeah, going. Yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, I'd say you go there at the Bowers Museum in Santa Ana. Actually cool, and if you haven't been to the Bowers Museum, it is an iconic part of historic Orange County, so it's worth a visit just to kind of check out the museum, the gardens, and the grounds. Oh, absolutely, and it's beautiful, so hopefully they have some that's actually in, in bloom, and I know I hope so. because of the timing, and we'll keep you updated on the Huntington Beach one, because of the timing of the bloom yeah. is how they set the actual uh, cherry blossom exactly. festival. So. Again, the good thing about the cherry blossoms, it's not like an instant in time that you have to catch it, so you can go check one in Santa Ana, and if you like it, or you can't make it, We'll keep you posted for Huntington Beach coming up soon, exactly. too. Exactly. What's next? What is next is actually the Jazz Wednesdays Winter Series. For those of you that are musically inclined or enjoy music, there's a great winter series held in Laguna Beach at the Seven Degrees event space, which is right in Laguna Canyon. There's six concerts starting February 12th. We've missed one of them. Going all the way through April 15th, they're at 6 to 8 p.m. And again, they're on Wednesdays. I think it's 30 bucks in advance. If you buy a whole series, it's less than that. But the event space is awesome, and I've heard from people that have gone there already this year that it's really a very fun evening. It's middle of the week. Traffic's generally a little bit lighter. It's a nice drive down the canyon. Go a little early. Check out Sunset at the Coast. It's just a really nice you midweek. You must love jazz music because you, two weeks ago you mentioned the Newport Beach Jazz Festival as I well. Do. So I think there's a jazz theme coming here and you must really love the, the jazz I'm learning music. to like jazz. Let's okay. just put it that way. I'm trying to expand my horizons. Jazz has not been one of my favorite things in the past, I'll oh, admit. Okay, okay. But I'm learning to love it and I'm enjoying it a lot. So if you have time, check out that festival Wednesday evenings. Again, links below for more information. Okay, so the one that I'm actually personally gonna go to, and hopefully I see you guys there, it's gonna be Tustin Sip and Stroll, put on by the Tustin Community Foundation. That's gonna be on Leap Day, February 29th. It's actually really cool how they set it up. A lot of businesses and, and uh, booths are set up and they give you like a little placard. They check off the, all the booths that you visited during the placard and you try all the foods. You can go into all the restaurants, they have drinks. Alcohol, oh, okay. alcoholic drinks alcohol. too. I'm, I'm going to be there all day, and I think it's a really fun event, and I'd love to see some of you guys there it's with me. It's kind of like a taste of, in other words. It really is a, almost a taste of, of like the old town test scenario. Like um, I'm actually going by myself, so maybe somebody can join me and, and be there with me because it's, it's a lot of fun. I don't miss it, and I, I really encourage you guys to go. Well, like we mentioned, the Bowers too. It's kind of cool. I'm an architecture buff, and the old town test scenario, if you haven't been, is an experience in itself. It's just fun to stroll around. There's a lot of history of Orange County there also, so I think it's an event that can you know, hit many of your different interests if you want to hit it. Yeah, really easy walking and, and really cool stuff. Absolutely. Okay. So after you've walked, drank, ate, danced, made lanterns, you're going to need to chill out. I actually attend this event sometimes on Friday mornings. I will sneak in to work a little lake. And this is, again, in Laguna Beach, but it's outdoor yoga and meditation. So it's a destination yoga, I will admit, but for some of our South County uh, viewers, maybe you want to check it out. It's all winter and spring long. It's at 9.30 in the morning at Alta Laguna Park, which is in the top of the world area of Laguna Beach. It's just 15 bucks if you ever just have a morning off. 
It's a great way to kind of ease into the weekend. Ah, um, and just settle down. Well, at least for us, because we're always so go, 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 yeah. it's nice just to get your head right. Even it, missing a couple hours in the morning for work is actually really important because it's going to make you effective all weekend long just by getting your head right during that time. And Lane has it right on. We are go, go as realtors all weekend long. And sometimes I will just reset myself with something I do on Friday mornings. I've enjoyed the yoga. Maybe you will too, or maybe it will inspire you to do something else to maybe end your week and reset yourself for the weekend. Yeah, maybe you yeah, maybe see Scott there on a Friday. You That'd might, be awesome. You might see me there on a Friday, absolutely. We have to, we're gonna do a first thing this week. Yes, we are. What's it called? You made a great name for it. This is a tip from the trenches. Tip from the trenches, and there's nobody more, there's nobody that's in the trenches more than we are, let me tell you. <laughs> I think what we're, our tip is, our tips are designed to help buyers and sellers in today's Orange County real estate marketplace, how to navigate what's happening in today's marketplace. And today what we're seeing, and the trend is it's going to continue through 2020, is very high buyer demand and short supply of homes for sale. And today's tip is really to help those buyers out there understand the landscape that's there for them to know they're going to be competing oftentimes with up to 15 offers on a property. And today's tip Lane's going to outline for us because he sure. just had a win. I did a big one. A big win. How many offers? I, I believe there are over 10 offers. They don't tell you the exact amount yeah. sometimes, but um, it sounded like there yeah. were over 10 offers. So today's tip and listen in if you're a buyer right now is how can you position yourself to be the offer that gets chosen when you're among a whole bunch of them. And I'm gonna have Lane outline that for us right now. Sure, there's so much that goes into it, and I'll try to give the abridged version. Um, but basically you wanna, the first thing you have to do is put a full package together. So you have to do a cover letter of the buyers, you have to explain to the, to the sellers why they love the home, what they're gonna do, how they're gonna take care of the home and all that. So you can hopefully tuck on the heartstrings a little bit with those sellers. It, believe it or not, it, it works. So if all things are equal and they know that you're gonna take really good care of the home and be good neighbors to the ones that, to the neighbors that they actually have come to like as yes, well, yes. that will help get your offer accepted. You have to have a pre-approval letter from a accredited lender, but we could take it a step further. Any of the lenders that we work with, we make sure that they physically call that listing agent to go over their qualifications. So that's highlight number one of this tip is the lender is gonna be calling the listing agent. We don't see that too often. We don't see it too often. And the reason why we have a lot of these tips is because fortunately the majority of the business that we do are actually listings on the listing side. So we sell a lot of homes. And what we do is when we work with a lot of buyer's agents ourselves, we want to, the buyer's agents that we select, you know what I mean? Like yeah. that, those are the ones that, that's how we want to emulate when right. we represent our buyers. So any of the tips and tricks that work for the buyer's agents that we exactly. work with, we're using for our buyers as well. Lane's absolutely right on that. and. On that note, the letter from the buyer, all these things, these are things we kind of see with varying degrees of completeness and conciseness. We know how to put the package together and Lane, I'm gonna give him the kudos, he had that aced and we've learned the format that, that the sellers wanna see. But the real nugget here is something that Lane has added to our package and that's what I want you to go into right now. Okay, so there's, I mean, there's a couple things, but the one that I think Scott is referencing yeah, yeah. to is, is highlighting our stats as buyer's agents because there's one thing that we have to do to sell you as a buyer, but we also have to sell ourselves. Over the next 30 to 45 days, we are gonna be working with these listing agents mm -hmm. for a long period of time, so they have to know that we're professional. Yep. They have to know that we actually close mm -hmm. for our clients and that we only work with motivated buyers. So we can show the listing agent that our record is 99.9% .9 of close rate right. and that our buyers do not back out of escrow. Yeah. That gives us the benefit, that gives us such a leg up on everybody else because anybody that wants, what do you say, a good escrow is a closed escrow, That's right? That's what I was saying, I was gonna go there. A good escrow is a closed escrow, and especially to the sellers, there's always that worry because from the moment the offer is accepted, there's a contingency time frame in which the buyer can back out of the contract and that can run sometimes up to 21 days. So there's 21 days, the seller's in limbo. Our job as buyer's agent is to say, you know what, Mr. Seller, if you go with our buyer, your risk of a fallout is almost nil. 0.01% probably. Yeah. So one of the biggest mistakes that we see buyer's agents make is they just text us, especially when we're listing agents, and we don't know, we can't get a sense of who they are and how they work. Yeah. So it's really important for us as buyer's agents to call the listing agent because it gives a couple of different things. It, it, we get to sell ourselves that we talked about earlier, but we also, um, you know, we, we get to build that rapport and when we, right we almost become friends with them. So when we get at the end of the conversation, when they feel like we're friends and there's 10 other offers, they're gonna pick the friend. You're right on. And what it is is, see, we only have a communication with that listing agent. They are our conduit to the seller. So if the listing agent likes us, likes our buyer, likes our package, he or she is going to be telling his clients, I think 
the Sack and Stone team's offer is one of the ones we might want to put at the top of the list. Yeah, now I know that half of this video is talking about the tips from the trench, and, and, but this one's really, really important because there's buyers that are missing on a lot of great opportunities and their dream home, so you have to line yourself up with a team that knows how to get offers accepted in a very competitive market. So thank you so much for watching, writing down all the tips, and thinking about us for all of your real estate needs. Now we'll go out, eat, drink, and be merry, and have fun.